you, uh, Senator Sass. Thank you, future Chairman Sass, um, for the uh, opportunity to uh, question the witness. And Mr. Ray, thank you for your um, prior service uh, and your continued willingness to serve our country, particularly at this important and difficult time. And I know this may not need repeating, but um, let us not forget why we're having this hearing. Your predecessor, James Comey, uh, was not even at the halfway point of his 10-year term as FBI director when President Trump abruptly fired him uh, without cause and without warning. And President Trump said when he fired Director Comey that he was thinking about the FBI's investigation of Russian interference into our elections, an investigation that Director Comey was then overseeing. So now, more than ever, I believe it to be crucial that our next FBI director be prepared to be steadfastly independent. Uh, and as we had a chance to discuss uh, before this hearing, it falls on you today uh, not only to clearly demonstrate to our committee um, that you possess the legal investigative and management skills required for the position for which you've been nominated, uh, but that you have a fierce commitment to maintaining the integrity of the FBI as an independent agency and that you will conduct yourself as FBI director in a way that is above partisanship. So um, let's move to it if we might. Um, first, how will you ensure that the FBI provides all the resources that Special Counsel Mueller needs to thoroughly conduct and complete the investigation he's currently in charge of? Well, uh, Senator, the, the first thing I would do, uh, if confirmed, is to reach out to former Director Mueller uh, and elicit his advice about what it is he needs and whether he's getting it from the FBI. Um, and knowing former Director Mueller and knowing um, what a straight talker and plain talker he is, I have no doubt that if he's not getting what he needs, he would let me know. Mm -hmm. I agree. Attorney General Sessions uh, praised your selection as the FBI nominee. Did you interview with Attorney General Sessions? I interviewed with Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and Attorney General Sessions together uh, at the same time. Uh, and did either of them ask you about the conduct of the Russia investigation during your interview? No. Um, Attorney General Sessions, uh, as we've discussed and you well know, is recused from, and I quote, any existing or future investigations of any matters related in any way to the campaigns for President of the United States, including the investigation into Russian interference. Um, as I told you when we met before, I'm concerned that Attorney General Sessions hasn't fully complied with the scope of his recusal. Um, is it appropriate for the Attorney General uh, to make public comments on the ongoing investigation, to engage in decisions about its resourcing, funding, or staffing? Is that an appropriate part of his management role of the agency as Attorney General? Well, Senator, I'm not, not sure it's for me to speak to the Attorney General's uh, decision making about his own public comments. I, I would say that if he's recused from an investigation, uh, to me that means he shouldn't be participating in decision making about the investigation. But of course the Attorney General is the head of, of the entire Justice Department and there's as important as this particular investigation is, and it is extremely important in my view, uh, there are many, many, many other things that the FBI and the Department are responsible for and I think that is the appropriate role for the Attorney General as its leader. So I'll agree with you that, in my view, it's not appropriate for the Attorney General to participate in investigations related uh, to the Trump campaign. Um, and as the person in charge of the operations of the Department of Justice, he is involved in making at the highest level management decisions. But it's exactly those decisions about the access to resources, the scope, the trajectory of Bob Mueller's investigation that I, that I wanted to make sure I got to. Um, will you commit to studying the scope of Attorney General Sessions' recusal and ensuring appropriate procedures are in place to honor it at the FBI and then reporting any violations of that recusal to this Congress? Well, uh, Senator, I'm, I'm not sure I'm the authority over his recusal scope. Um, what I would commit to you is that I will take a close look shortly upon being confirmed, if confirmed, to, as I said, making sure that former Director Mueller, now Special Counsel Mueller, has all the appropriate resources that he ought to have. Um, and my expectation is that I would remain committed to that support regardless of any decisions by anybody else in the department. 
So if a directive came down from the Attorney General uh, about prioritization or resources that you thought inappropriately interfered, or interfered in any way with the resources requested uh, by Special Counsel Mueller, you'd act to prevent that from hindering the investigation? I would not tolerate any inappropriate uh, influence on Special Counsel Mueller's investigation to the extent that I'm supporting it. It's, at the end of the day, it's his investigation. Um, we had another conversation last week. Um, it's been raised by other colleagues about an episode during your time at the Department of Justice when you were prepared to resign. And this was over an ongoing um, but unauthorized by Congress uh, surveillance program. And you testified previously you hadn't been read into all the details of it. Uh, and it seemed in some ways you were um, going on a gut hunch. You were following people who you knew were thoroughly read in, who you'd practiced closely with and whom you admired. That's, I'm just characterizing roughly what I heard before. But now in hindsight, you've had time to better understand what was going on, what was the contest and what were the issues. In hindsight, um, were you right to be willing to throw your career aside and to be willing to join these folks uh, in resigning had they had to? And would you do that again? Uh, as to the first part of your question, Senator, I have not for any minute ever regretted my willingness to resign, as I explained it to Deputy Attorney General Comey at that time. My decision was not based solely on gut. My decision was based on knowledge, very close working knowledge with the range of people who were, who were read in and knowing that they were not, as I said to Senator Whitehouse, not shrinking violets, mm -hmm. very tough on terror. Uh, very thoughtful, uh, intellectually honest people, uh, and people who, by the way, didn't all agree with each other all the time. Mm -hmm. So when I put all that together, my familiarity with those people, how they think, how they come out on war on terror issues, and knowing that they felt strongly enough that they were willing to resign over much greater knowledge of the program than I had at the time, I was confident then that resigning with them, if necessary, was the right decision. And now later, having learned many more of the facts that weren't available to them, to me then, I'm even more confident that it would have been the right decision. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for that. Former Attorney General Bell, I think you quoted before, is saying that um, you should be willing uh, to resign, if necessary, over conduct if you're pressed to engage in it that's either unethical, illegal, or unconstitutional. Could you just explore for me for a few more minutes, what were the values that you brought to that decision and what values um, among those three or others would you bring to having to make a similar decision in the future if you get pressed to do something that meets one of those three tests suggested by former Attorney General Bell? Well, the values I brought to that particular decision were the knowledge that it was the appropriate, that the appropriate parts of the Justice Department uh, and the FBI were doing their job, doing their duty to evaluate the legality of the program in question. And I thought that knowing the confidence that I had in them, in their commitment to duty, their ability to do their job, that that needed to be respected, respected even to the point of me having to resign to support them in it. I'm not sure if I got all of your questions, so I, may, I might need you to refresh me. That, that's more than satisfactory, thank you. Um, Acting Attorney General Sally Yates uh, was fired after she refused to um, defend the travel ban based on her concerns the order uh, wasn't lawful or consistent with the facts. Um, if you were fired or resigned for refusing to carry out a presidential order, um, will you commit to come to Congress to testify about that decision and what drove you to make that decision? Well, certainly if I legally and appropriately can. I mean, I'd need to know the circumstances of any particular situation. Um, but I would, so I would want to comply with the law and the rules first and foremost. But, but if I can, I would comply with any lawful request from Congress. Let me, if I now, in my last minute, um, return to a question that was raised um, earlier. Um, I just want to make sure we've gotten this uh, clearly. Senator Graham asked you about uh, an email to Donald Trump Jr. Um, offering the Trump campaign uh, very high level and sensitive information, and this is a quote from the email, as part of Russia and its government support for Mr. Trump. Um, chief ethics lawyers for former presidents George W. Bush and President Obama have said, and this is a joint quote, we've worked on political campaigns for decades and have never heard of an offer like this one. 
If we had, we would have insisted upon immediate notification of the FBI, and so would any normal campaign lawyer, official, or even senior volunteer. Um, Russian interference in our election happened and may very well happen again. If a campaign staffer uh, or a senator or someone working um, around them gets an offer of foreign government assistance to defeat its opponent, do you agree the right thing to do is to promptly notify the FBI? Senator, I would hope that anyone who is aware of an effort to, uh, or an attempt to interfere with our elections would uh, report that to the appropriate authorities. I mean, just whether it's somebody in a campaign or somebody anywhere else, I think the, especially in the context of cyber type intrusions, um, the FBI and others in the intelligence community depend on people uh, who are receiving the contact from reaching out and coordinating with law enforcement intelligence community. And that's a, a big, important part of the messaging on that effort. And so I would think anybody in that situation, I would hope, would want to bring the issue to the attention of the appropriate authorities, assuming they think that something untoward or inappropriate has, has occurred. Can you reach any other conclusion from that email um, other than something untoward and inappropriate is being proffered? Senator, I. I I haven't read the email. I haven't even had a chance to read any of the newspaper coverage. Uh, it's all happened during a time when I've spent all day going from one Senate building to another, meeting with all of your colleagues. And so I'm, I'm sorry, but I just don't know the details of the email. I think Senator Graham's already asked uh, for you to get read in on it and respond to us in the future. Do I have a few more minutes, or Senator Sass, do you have another round of questions? I understand we're waiting for Senator Flake, who may be on as well. I have another round, but we also have votes. So you can go two more, but not a full round. Two more minutes. I will conclude. Thank you, sir. Um, let me simply say um, to your family, uh, I'm grateful for your willingness to undertake this. Um, and to you personally, I'm grateful for your willingness to undertake this. Uh, as we spoke, uh, I think we are at an absolutely essential moment uh, for the future of rule of law and respect for our institutions and traditions in this country. And as you've heard from senators, both Republican and Democrat, um, this is a, an essential confirmation hearing and a critical role which you're undertaking because of the pace at which things are moving, uh, because of the challenges and issues and allegations in front of us, because of the central role the FBI plays in counterintelligence, in enforcing our laws, in protecting our republic. Uh, and I um, am confident um, that you have the skills, the experience, and the values to be a great FBI director. I appreciate your testimony in front of this committee today. Thank you, Senator. It means Thank a lot. You.